I honestly feel that one the problem that I saw when they got rid of Gavin Hunt, of course they had to because in the they were struggling in the league. I mean, I think at one point in time they were number 14, 15. With quality of players, I don't think it's the only problem. Yes, uh, Bisto and Mashio, they are right that some of the quality players, some of the players at Chiefs are not case at Chiefs material. But I don't think it's the only problem. I think they have tried to invest heavily on signings, but it is just something that's not combining what is at I think the management knows. Uh, Mark is not with us today. Um, he's out doing his uh, his other business. You know, he is uh, a person that uh, takes care of players and minds the business of players from a managerial point of view. So he's out doing that business, but he's going to be back with us um, in the coming weeks. So next Friday, you can look forward to Coach Mark Haskins, who joins us every single Friday as part of the Podcast Friday squad. And then Nadim's here. Uh, Bezos, yeah, and uh, we've got uh, one of our favorites here on the show. He's a regular uh, whenever we do need him. People love his opinions. You can catch him on the Sundowns podcast as well. He's always on that. Katla Komashekho Mahuta is going to be uh, engaging with us. The topics we're going to be covering include the ones that you've sent us, the questions that you've sent us. Go to Twitter. It's at Andy Lingube, at SNA with Andy Le, where we say, Ask the podcast Friday, guys. So some of the questions that you've asked, we'll be asking to the guys as well. And remember, they're going to be choosing one match over the weekend that they'll be giving us a lowdown and their thoughts on. But some of the topics we're going to be talking about include Luke Email, former Free State Stars, um, and uh, Paul Gwana City coach, who says there's been conversations between his team and Kaiser Chiefs. Goes on to say that he thinks that this is the best Chiefs squad in a long time. Mm. Right. So he obviously wants his hands on Chiefs. He's had conversations with Amazulu and he says he was uh, signing the contract and all of a sudden there was no contract to sign. He's had conversations with many teams and uh, Chiefs seems to be the one that he wants. So we'll discuss that. We'll discuss also Dr. Kumalo, his views on Tembi Kosi Lodge. It's a question I asked him on a podcast that we do together and, you know, his answer to that as well. So that's one of the big things we're going to be talking about. But also from our sister station here, a conversation with Mohsin Etugro where he speaks about the issues and challenges at Kaiser Chiefs. Let's park that for a little bit. So those are some of the things we're going to be talking about. Karma Billiard unveiled out in Zimbabwe. It was a big deal, guys. It was a big deal. Karma Billiard, you know, he was doing what we see Ronaldo and them do at the stadium. Mategi Bola, you know, signing contracts. Hey, my man, Timmy Kosilot was signed. I didn't see Mategi Bola. <laughs> Yeah. You know, it was a big deal. But firstly, let me introduce our guys on the far right. He's a social media wizard. He takes care of all our social media, but also he's just one of those immense readers when it comes to all things football. Be so snaps. Thank you so much for the opportunity once again, Ma'a, and um, good evening to the listeners of the number one sports show in South Africa. And then, of course, uh, he's the most controversial, but he's the one that everybody loves to hate. Nadim Lukele. I'm not sure, but controversial. Um, nice guy. But yeah, Andy, <laughs> yeah, Andy, it's good to be here. Yeah, it was interesting to see a church introducing a uh, come up yet as a football player. Uh, no, it is. I saw it on well, YouTube. We'll, we'll get to it. <laughs> we'll get to it. <laughs> Katanga Masheko is also with us. Former Swallows Chiefs and Orlando Pirates and Mamilodi Sundowns forward. Masheko Mahuta. Mahuta. <laughs> good evening, Maa, and good evening to to the guests and the guys in the studio and. Good evening to your listeners, and I'm looking forward to keep chatting everything that that happened in the week and all the stories that you spoke about. Well, there's one that just broke now, and it, it impacts South Africa in a great way. A man that I did an interview with uh, when I was doing uh, uh, the Africa Cup of Nations out in Cote d'Ivoire after the Sundowns, after the 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 the, the, the game. Um, South Africa, rather, versus Nigeria. I had a conversation with the coach, Basiera. He's now left that Nigerian job. And we know that this is a job mm. that Pizzo's once mentioned. So we'll get into that one as well because it has a big foot in what South African qualifications will look like. But let's start right at the top. And I'm going to go with you first, B. So have a listen to this. This is Mohsin Etugrol saying that there's no DNA at Kaiser Chiefs. The team needs to find their own DNA. And um, the people also want just not the result. They also want to be mentored. In the end, the difficulties uh, in a big club, uh, you need to have this DNA uh, that has been transferred to the players. And obviously, very much important. In those years, I had Dr. Kumalos, uh, Tabu Mukis, uh, Jabu Pulis. There were play- there, there players uh, from the DNA of Kaiser Chiefs, from the own side. So you buy today players. Sometimes they don't understand uh, the way how the team uh, ticks. And, and uh, obviously, you need to pass that to everyone who comes through. 
This is Mohsin Etegrol speaking to our sister station here at the SABC. He speaks about a DNA. This, is, of course, is on the back of Kaza Chiefs, unable to beat a team that doesn't play in the same league as them in the, um, in, in the Netbank Cup and getting knocked out yet again for yet another season, not being able to qualify outside of the last 32. Biso, I'm going to start with you. Mm-hmm. says no DNA. You don't have that. And he mentions the creative players, if you think about it. He mentions the creative players and says that's who he had. There is no DNA with the current squad. There's so much truth to that, and it's something that has been said over and over for uh, quite a, a while now with Kaiser Chiefs. The, the type of signings that they make compared to the, the style of play that you would expect from a Kaiser Chiefs. I, I remember the first time that I was on the show, I mentioned that when they signed Ox, that he's a defensive player. What they needed is creativity in that midfield. For a long time, Kaiser Chiefs has struggled with that. I mean, if you look at the squad that they have right now, uh, another thing that is a problem is the continuity with that squad. There's about 15 players that they signed last year in the squad. There's about nine from the previous year. Mm. So uh, when you're building a team, are they, are they in a rebuild? And if they are in a rebuild, then you need also to be making the right uh, acquisitions in terms of coaches. Mm. If you look at the last four coaches that they've had, there was a lot of talk about a Gavin Hunt and the style of play that he has. Uh, of course, legendary coach in South Africa based on what he has won, based on the league title, but in terms of style of play, there's always been an issue there. You look at an Atazwana, the inexperience that he had. You, you go on to uh, Molifinseki, who didn't come with any coaching achievements or, or, you know, in terms of what he had achieved as a coach. You look at Kevin Johnson, who also, as much as he has done so much with the Platinum Stars, has never really won anything in terms of titles uh, as a coach. So there's a, a serious issue, I feel, in terms of the acquisitions from players to coaches, that identity is lost. And the players that he mentioned, about Tabo Moki, all those type of players were very creative in midfield. You look at the team right now, there is no leaders. They, yes, so many is is, is Keegan Dolly not a creative player? Is Kama Billiard not a creative but player? But in terms of form, in terms of consistency, they've struggled with that. All so right. No, but they issue. are proven PSL players. They were they chiefs. Are proven. Yes, they, they were chiefs. Remember, Kaiser Chiefs inherited the CPT where there was Castro, Kama Billiard, and... Totally, but they couldn't. Those players brought the but champion. That's what I'm saying. That the, the coaching that they've gotten has not been able to get that out of them. They've not been able to get a coach that can get the best out of those players, and they haven't consistently built a team that can move them for a couple of let years. Me, let, let, let me leave it there with you, Pisa, and go to Katlejo here. Katlejo, yeah. DNA, and this is not the first time I'm hearing this. Some Konza sits here mm. and speaks about a, a Chiefs player as well, saying that Chiefs can't just take anybody. The specific Chiefs player, Chiefs material player. Mohsine to grow saying the DNA achieves is lost. Yeah, I, I I don't know how this is going to sound to to, to Chiefs supporters or to to Chiefs, Kaiser Chiefs itself, the club. But I feel like uh, the current Kaiser Chiefs, any player can play for that team. I think that's the one thing that uh, that they they need to sort out because Chiefs used to have like top players, and now currently they have players that are there that are a bit average, they're not players that are going to win the league, they're not players that are going to consistently perform at that level compared to other teams, you know. So I, I think Machine is right, the DNA in the chief setup now is lacking because they they, they, they sign players that are, are not meant for that club. That club is a big club, it's a club that has its own character of players and they, they always sign top players. And I think when you, you speak of rebuilding and whatnot, a team can't rebuild for 10 years. If you rebuild, then you need to uh, uh, set up the way, in a way that you're going to rebuild. You need to have a consistent coach that's going to be there for, for longer, maybe four or five years. That's rebuilding. But they're rebuilding at the same time. They've had how many coaches in the past three, Mahuta, four, five years? If I, if, I throw some <laughs> players, if I throw some players your way and say, number one, yeah. the CBD, we know what they did at Sundowns. We know that they're top players. And then I bring to you, you know, a player that was one of the best. We all looked at him in wonder, Unchangase, when he came to Kaza Chiefs. Uh, I can bring maybe even Ashley Dupree now when he comes to Kaza Chiefs. Sitebe was a, a monster out at Amazulu. These were players yeah. that were performing in the teams that they were at. And that's why Kaza Chiefs and Ox even, everybody was saying, hey, who is this kid doing so well? Those are players that were, were performing. They were the best in their teams when Chiefs got them. So... Is it just still just any player? Because, I mean, um, uh, another one. He wins best player in the PSL. I mean, he goes to Turkey. Lebukhang Manyama comes to Chiefs. Yeah. Doesn't shine. Jabulungo I, was a defender of the season in Solos. He went to Chiefs. Here's another one. Jabulungo. Yeah. 
I understand that. That's why I say uh, Mushin is right. The DNA of Kaiser Chiefs. Do those players have the the characteristics to play for Kaiser Chiefs? Probably yeah. not. But they were good players somewhere. It doesn't mean if you're a good player at another club, you suddenly gonna be able to withhold the pressure of playing for a team like Kaiser Chiefs. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Mm. But if you have a, 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 a squad of players that understand the the culture at Kaiser Chiefs, that understand the pressures that come with playing for Kaiser Chiefs. I mean, Kaiser Chiefs at a certain point had a, a Matoho, they had a, a Katande, a Bennett Parker, a Shabalala, a Manda Matango, a Tiabonga Nkosi. Those were top players. They proved that they're smaller teams and they went to Chiefs and proved that as well. But it, what I'm saying is you, mm. you can't have players that are performing at their clubs and think they can withhold the, the, the pressures and they, they can perform at the standards of a Kaiser Chiefs. That's, wow. that's basically, it, it, it's not going to happen. And that's exactly what's happening now. And add to that with the inconsistencies of... I'm going to hold it there, Katlako. I need to take a very quick break. Just hold it there for me. We'll carry on just now. It's exactly 23 after the hour six. I'm sorry, sorry Katlako. Um, we have to pay the bills there, so I cut you a little bit. Uh, but perhaps let me let me, let me, let me uh, let you finish your thought because I also want to move on to the mm-hmm. coach that is offered himself. But we'll just finish your thought there on Kaza Chiefs and the sort of players. You're telling us about, you know, the, the players that were there, the Masangos, the, um, the Siabongas, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, th- those were top players and they had the characteristics to play for Kaza Chiefs. And, and I, I hear a lot of people talking about the CBD and, and they went to Chiefs and they never achieved it. But at sundown, they had backup. At sundown, they had players that were there and doing their jobs, you know. They had a Sompoke Ghana behind them. Mm. They had a Chamber Zwane on the right, and the defense was very solid. They had a Langer man on the other side. Those are the things that, 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 contribute to, that contributed to that CBD shining. But obviously, when players play or when a team wins, obviously there must be one player or two or three that stand out. And at that time, it was that CBD. But when they went to Chiefs, they were not the same players, and they didn't get the same players to support them at Kaiser Chiefs. Nadim Mohsin Etegrol says the DNA at Kaza Chiefs is completely gone. The yesteryear great players who were playmakers in particular, Dr. Kumalo, Tabu Mwaki, Jabu Pule, no more there and the team is unrecognizable. Yeah, it, it is unrecognizable. That's a fact. It is unrecognizable. But at the same time, you look at the 2020 COVID where Chiefs lost the league by one point. If they didn't throw against Baroka in that game, they would have won the league if they won that game. Unfortunately, they didn't. So it's not like they've been far off from winning the league. There are chances, times where they lost to TS Galax via Zakele Lepasa's penalty in NetBank Cup. They would have won. So it's not like they've been far off from challenging anything. I would like to respectively like disagree on the whole thing of players. I honestly... Th- I know I'm one of those who is saying some of the players, the Chiefs, were not Kaza Chiefs material. But of course, they will be supporting players who are not going to be main starters, but they were very good players. When they signed uh, Kama Pile, it was still very good. Even Pizzo wanted him back at one point in time. When they signed Toli, was still good, was still a quality player. They've, they've, they've invested in very, very good players. Kune was still at his best. That's why Nukovic was there. He's already scored five goals at TS Galax. That's why Kaza Chiefs reached the CAF Champions League final. They almost won it. Of course, they lost it in the final. That, that's how good they are. If you look at the coaches that have coached, you look at uh, the guy who won the league with Chiefs, the last guy to won the trophy with Chiefs, which is uh, Stuart Baxter. He came back. Of course, he, t- he couldn't do it. Uh, Gavin Hunt, I mean, he was so bad at Kaza Chiefs. People almost, almost call him Hunt Gavin. They didn't recognize him that it was the same Gavin Hunt who was at Super Sport United. He failed. He struggled it. Why did he struggle? At the same time, in the Champions League, he did so well. I mean, he t- carried that team to the semifinals. He felt that if he continued, he was going to win the Champions League and also maybe improve in the league. I honestly feel that one, the problem that I saw when they got rid of Gavin Hunt, of course they had to because in the, they were struggling in the league. I mean, I think at one point in time they were number 14, 15. With quality of players, I don't think it's the only problem. Yes, uh, Pisto and Mashio, they are right that some of the quality players, some of the players at Chiefs are not case Chiefs material. But I don't think it's the only problem. I think they have tried to invest heavily on signings, but it is just something that's not combining what is something? I think the management knows, but it's not something. There's something, man. It's beyond football, my man. It has nothing to do. Uh, if you look at the beyond football, <laughs> yeah, I know it's beyond football. It, sometimes it takes patience. Uh, yeah, okay, the way I see it, I think it's timing when to get rid of a guy. It's not Kaza Chiefs. It has never been Kaza Chiefs culture when you grew up. We grew up. Kaza Chiefs used to win trophies. They never used to get uh, rid of a coach in the middle of the season. It was the first time when I saw when they did that to Gavin Hunt. Then again, uh, Stuart Baxter, the way he left 
you felt they were so impatient with him. It was even scary. Then you see those kind of things and combination of signings. As Bisto was saying, you make a recruitment, you don't become patient enough. After a season, you feel like you have not done well. You don't give a guy. The, the, Steve Gombello was given three years, but the others, they were not given time. Well, let's very quickly speak about a coach that's offered himself. Uh, Luke M.I.L. says he's had conversations with Kaiser Chiefs um, via his agent who spoke to Kaiser Jr., but he also spoke to Kaiser Jr., and he thinks they've got a great squad. Have a listen to Luke M.I.L., former Free State Start coach. You know, people are asking me about Kaiser Chief, but you have to know that uh, also the agent after the deal fell in Amazulu and after uh, the coach of Kaiser Chief uh, before he was fired, before they appointed Kevin Johnson as uh, head coach of development. Yeah, the agent spoke with Kaiser Chief, and unfortunately, it seems that Mr. Kaiser Jr. Uh, responded in uh, on a special way to to my agent. Then I wrote him on uh, an email, a personal email, but he said to me that. He never spoke with his agent, so you know I don't know in this case uh, on which route I have to dance. I don't know what a special way is. He says <laughs> his agent says <laughs> Kaiser Jr. has responded in a special way. You wouldn't tell me what the special way is. Uh, let me go to Mahuta on this one. Yeah. Luke Emile, would he be a good fit at Kaiser Chiefs? From what we know of him when he's been here in South Africa, uh, I, 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 I followed him when he was at Free State Stars, you know, because. I was a football person at that time, you know, and and uh, I was still playing. I, I I think he's a good coach, but uh, I've I've listened to top coaches talk and whatnot. And Marcelo Lippi, the Italy coach, who won the mm. World Cup with Italy, once said, "There's no good coach, but the coach mm. is only made up of his good players. If a coach has good players, then he becomes a good coach. You know, that's why now you see in, uh, in England, Man City, they go and buy a right back for fifty million or something. But I I. I don't know if he's offering himself to Kaiser Chiefs or and Chiefs are not interested, probably because of other things. But I, I, I would give him a chance. I think he's, he's a good coach, and maybe if he goes to a bigger team, you know, with more resources and all that than free State staff, he might do well. I, I, I just don't know how he offered himself to Kaiser Chiefs and what was the conversation there. But I, I think now Chiefs need to try anything. They need to try all the coaches. <laughs> 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 I think they, need, they need to give everyone a chance. <laughs> All right, uh, Biso. Um, I, I think before I answer that, I just want to say, you know, South Africa is coming from uh, an Afcon tournament where we were the talk of Africa, we were the talk of the world. Mm. There is so much focus on uh, South, the South African League right now, and you know what, what we we've, from what Bafana have been able to achieve mm. at Afcon. Now, a look, Mil. We have to be very um, careful with stuff like this. Um, look, Mil. What he did at First Day Stars was amazing. In him winning um, the Netbank Cup back in 2018, and um, you know he did well in that season to to win that trophy. But if you look at what they did um, in the league. You know, towards the end of that season, they were struggling in the league because they were looking forward to this Netbank Cup final. You know, yes, they went on to win the Netbank Cup. The next season, he was fired after, I think, 10 league games because he'd lost seven of them. Mm. So it's, it's, it's a little difficult to say that him going to a Kaiser Chiefs because what are we basing it on? In terms of style of play for a Kaiser Chiefs, I, I'm not sure if he's a really good fit. There's better mm-hmm. South African coaches that can do the job at Kaiser Chiefs. If you look at how long he's lasted in the teams that he's coached, I mean, since he left South Africa, he's had four jobs. He hasn't lasted a year in any of them. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Wow. It, it, yeah, it's always moving. It's a guy on the move. I know him personally. I remember when I was, when I was at Polo Kwan City, I spent a day with him. He's just not a Kaiser Chiefs coach. That guy is a loose cannon. He just, like, even now, I mean, if, like, let's say Kesa Chiefs wanted to sign him. Now he's revealing the whole thing that Kesa Jr. didn't come back to him and all that kind of thing is unnecessary. Same scenario, he was supposed to join Pirates, I remember very well. He was supposed to re- replace jo- jo- Roger Dessa. Again, I think the way he carried himself, he was already announcing himself as a coach and all. He's just not a Kesa Chiefs coach. I don't think he can build that team. Yes, he's a good coach for what he has done, but if you look at the teams that he has coached, he has not coached your TP Mazembe, your Ali Ali, your... He has not coached the elite teams. He has coached these almost promising teams. He usually takes teams from relegation and make them qualify for Champions League and all those kind of things. You can't now say it cares that Chiefs can't be a solution. He can't be a solution. I don't even think Chiefs can hire him because they were, it's just outspoken too much. Care that Chiefs is a big club. You, what, you need to watch what you say, of course. 
He's just one of those guys who can just bring more confusion in the Chiefs. Already there's so many problems. The fans even, if you can see, they, are, they want the yeah, Chiefs Even to I winning. still have a, an issue with him over you know, the, 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 the sentiment of what he said when he was out in Tanzania, which he says he was cleared of. But I mean, that's something that I would still need to talk to him about. Of course. I mean, he's, he's, yeah, he's one of those guys. You, don't, you just not, don't know what's going to come from him. Chiefs is a big brand. He's got so many supporters. I mean, I know Kevin Jones is there. He's struggling. Of course, they have to replace him because he's not a future at Keza Chiefs. He was hired as a head of development or something like that. They need to get a quality coach who's going to build that team and improve it. I don't think he's that kind of a guy who can improve Keza Chiefs. All right, uh, let's move on from Kaza Chiefs and uh, the coaches there, what Mohsin has said and what Luke Emel has said. And let's move on to Kama Billiard. We've got uh, Dr. Kumar, uh, rather Kama Billiard, who's been announced in, 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 um, in a church. In, in, in Zimbabwe. Uh, Mahuta, <laughs> I saw you move from team to team to team. I can hope you don't touch a stadium for take a ball. Hey, 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 hey. hey that, that's interesting. But um, I, I, I would think the club wants to, to, to you know, build a vibe around him. He, he's a big signing for them. I mean, he's a player that comes from South Africa, had a long career in South Africa. Hmm. And I think uh, Kama is a brand himself. I think he's going to bring a lot to that club. But whether he can still do the things that he did four or five years ago, we'll wait and see. But uh, I think a move back to Zimbabwe is a, is a step back for him in his career. But we just wish him the best. And we know he's getting old. He can't do the same things that he used to do. But I mean, it's good to, if, if that's the case, it's nice to go retire at home and, mm-hmm. and bring some excitement into the football league at home. Yeah, of course. I think even the club that uh, Yada, I think they, they looked at that and that's why they made a whole movie about him coming to back to Zimbabwe. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I think it served them well and maybe it might improve their league or yeah. the, the, the standard of football in that side. But, you know, I, I wish him all the best. Nadim? Yeah, it's one of those players who just wish him all the best because he, yeah. he tried his like a super sport United. It didn't work out. It case achieves. He was no longer the same guy. He was at Sundowns. In Zimbabwe, I'm not sure the standard of the league. Uh, yeah, it's good for him. I mean, uh, he, was, he was gifted a two million car. The church announced him yesterday in a very beautiful video. It's one of those. I think personally, it's, it's a very good for him, come up with it. But his career is suffered so many injuries at Kaiser Chiefs. He's no longer the same player that he was. It can improve. I don't know if he can still come back to the PSL. Well, let's leave Kama there and move on to a story that I've been eager to speak about. I spoke to Dr. Kumalo and we spoke about the career of Timbiko Siloch. He's obviously fallen off the Bafana Bafana roster over the last year or so. Mm. Uh, Hugo Bruce has not used him. He missed out on the Africa Cup of Nations. He's had a couple of injuries as well and he's had a tumultuous time at Orlando Pirates. So the question was, seeing him now at Sundowns, in a team filled with the superstars that play there, that play African football week in, week out, that play at uh, Bafana Bafana, do we see or foresee a revival of Tembi Kosiloch back to Bafana Bafana? Do you think there's a potential to revive Tembi Kosiloch's international career? He's playing with yeah. a team filled with internationals. Yeah. He's now going to be playing a lot more African football on, yeah. the, on the continent. Mm-hmm. Do you see a way back to him? The unfortunate part, whether we like it or not, that's a God-given talent. No one can take it away from him. The parents didn't instill it or any coach. It's a God-given talent. So if he, Unayo, and he's, he's showing us that he's ready to be back into the national team, why not? He- Piso, why not? Tempico Siloch, um, you look at him, his age, uh, uh, his movements, the amount of football he's played. Mm. Tempico Siloch back at Bafana Bafana level. Do you think this is still a window open for him? I think so, I think the one thing that has hampered Tempico Siloch for a long time has been the injuries, you know, consistency in terms of game time at Orlando Pirates. Mm. I feel like that's probably the reason why he didn't really get that much of a look in um, with Hugo Bruce. But now that he's surrounded by so much quality at Mamre de Sundowns, we're seeing a lot more of his own quality also. I mean, he's only played four games. I think he scored a goal and assisted one goal. The, the, the type of play that he's, he's um, shown at Mamre de Sundowns, you know, the effect that he's able to run in behind. He's able to identify space. He's able to pick a pass also. Mm-hmm. We saw the pass that he gave with Shalulile against uh, Orlando Pirates. Jeez. You know, beautiful pass. So I think those qualities are going to work in his favor. And the fact that I- I- when he's at Sundowns, he's playing with players that Hugo Bruce is 
is using at Bafana Bafana already. So he's already seeing the combinations that exist between him and those players. So it will work well in his favor in the long run. Mahuta, you look at typical slot. If you told somebody who's watching football for the first mm. time in South Africa the last two seasons, <laughs> and you say to them that this is one of our best players, this is, you know, the emulation of the Jabupules, the Doctors, the uh, Steve Lukwileas, this is the main man, this is the Timbers one of Orlando Pirates even maybe. Uh, at the time, they'd look at you and say, I, I'm not seeing it because he hasn't been at his best, to be honest. Is there a revival of Timbi Lodge that could be on the cards? Yeah, I, I, I think he needs to uh, uh, focus on the on the small things first. Uh, I mean, he needs to uh, take this thing step by step. You know, I was in a situation like that when I was playing. But uh, first and foremost, and what is clear for everyone is that he needs to be in the starting lineup. He needs to fight to be in the starting lineup. First and foremost, mm-hmm. that's what he needs to do. And I, after that, what happens there, whether he stays in the starting lineup because he's playing well and whether he's doing the, the things that Rulani wants from him, then it's a different story. But first things first, he needs to find himself in the starting lineup because we might talk about him. We know what he can do. We know what he has done. We know what he has achieved, the Pirates and all his football career. But he needs to start at the beginning and find himself in the starting lineup of Mamelodi Sundown. In a team that has so much quality. In a team That's that a can good play point. without him. Yeah. In a team that can play without him and you won't even notice him. He, he, he's not there. So I think the first thing he needs to do is to find himself in the starting lineup and then from there on he can work on all the other things, whether he goes back into the national team, whether he so, so that's a very that's a very long term goal. That one, first one, get yourself in the eleven. Wow! True, get yourself in that team, in that Mamelodi Sundown team. Whether it's rotated or not, but the coach should always be thinking about you. Should always be saying to himself, mm. you know, I need a lodge in this team. I, for me to win, I need a lodge. But that's the, 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 the one of his biggest challenges so far this year, or probably early next season. I would think that would be his challenge. First, he needs to get into the Sundown team. I, I think it's I think it's up to him, honestly speaking, because at Pirates we know that he didn't take his career that much serious. Uh, if you look at his off the field instance, then there are so many stories about him that I felt that if he was focusing on the team, he was going to be part of the Afghan squad that went to Cote d'Ivoire. At Sundowns, it looks like he wants to basically restore his career and he's gonna do that he's good enough to be back in the starting lineup at sundowns to be a starter and also he's good enough to be in the bafana bafana team he's one of the most talented his talent you cannot doubt but he just need to focus on his football for i mean the other thing can come after five years it's already 30 years if you can just focus on the next four years let's say i want to play football the talent is there he can come back in the national team he's good enough dr kumalo is right that is a god-given talent with lodge he's that quality of a player from pirates when he joined from chipper united you just knew that he's talented I mean, he's one of the highest scorers in the dub. Even in big matches, he doesn't sh- shine away. He's always going to show up. He just needs to convince... R- Rulani already has faith in him. He just needs to work hard and make sure that he puts guys like Tembas one on their toes to be a, a start at Sundown. 86 is the number you can call us on. It's 86 Your WhatsApp voice notes on 60 it's 18.43 on the Mighty Metro FM. It's Podcast Friday, and the guys are here. We've got uh, Mahuta, our guest that we absolutely love having. But why don't you have him every Friday? Oh, busy, Mahuta. Oh, busy. Oh, busy. <laughs> Mesh 21. Mesh 21. Oh, busy. Yeah, Leonardo <laughs> said it's Mesh 21. We've got Biso as well as Nadim <laughs> here. Let's get into the next one, guys. The next one, and it's important because of South Africa's qualifying group for the World Cup. Jorge Passiero who is the coach or was the coach of Nigeria, has been let go, has resigned, has quit. This is a relationship that we knew wasn't great going into AFCON. Mm. He took them to the finals of AFCON and we thought, hey, maybe this will you know, make that relationship a little bit better. But it hasn't. They've now parted ways. Mm. So I want you, it's a two-prone question. So that's it. Nigeria have let him go. What are your thoughts on that? Mm. And on the other side, do you remember? Mm. Pizzo Musimane made himself available for this Nigeria job. Have a listen. One thing that, to be honest, I would still say I would want to win is the Cup of Nations, maybe, or go to the World Cup with the team. I would still want to do a national team. Uh, as you say, I don't choose what comes, but if you say, am I interested? I'm highly interested. I would like to go to the World Cup and, and lead a team in the World Cup. I think... Uh, 
And he spoke uh, further on when he went on about Nigeria in that there. He's just won his first match today, in fact, at Abba. He's won his first match, Peter Musimane, 1-2-0. So he's got a job at the moment, but coaches have left, you know, contracts in the middle. Biso, let me start with you here. It's a two-prone question. Jose is gone in Nigeria. Uh, we've got qualifiers with them in June, I think it is. And then we've got Pito who said, hey, I'd be interested to go to an Africa Cup of Nations. There is one next year and the World Cup. Yeah, um, I think coming into the tour- tournament, I remember we spoke to Omar o- o- Agakduba and he was talking about how there isn't that much confidence in the Nigerian coach going into the tournament, right? Mm. Y- you look at the number of games that he-, he coached, I think it's about 22 games, he only won half of them. With the amount of talent and quality that he has in that squad, you would expect uh, a-, a lot more. They went into the tournament, they went as far as the final itself, you see. So it's it's a bit of a... A weird one when you look at their run in the, in the uh, AFCON tournament and what they were able to achieve. But then a lot of that run was also built on the solidity in defense. Up front, they didn't really get as much as they could have out of an, a Victor Osman, for example. You know, so it, there's, uh, uh, there was a lot of issues with him going into the tournament and he, he didn't really address that much of it, even though he did get to the final itself. So I, I'm not really surprised mm. by him leaving um, the post. As far as Pizzo, <laughs> as a South African, I'd be a little worried because the one thing that I've always um, seen with Pizzo is, you know, Nadim speaks a lot about how Real Madrid doesn't care about how they play. They just want to win games. And I think that's something that Pizzo could bring to a, a Nigerian national team where he will get them into that winning mentality because that's what he has built uh, for so many years, that winning mentality with his teams. Yeah, interesting one with the Nigerian coach. If you look at his record in the final, it was so bad. One shot on target, 37% ball position. For me, I mean, a coach, if he plays like that in a cup final with those qualities, he has to go. Even if, like, I don't know, like he went to the extra time. He's not the kind of a guy who was making use of the Nigerian players that they have. They've got so many players that are quality. Alexi Wobi was even criticized because the players was not playing him according to the way he's playing. Like it's more like a playmaker. If you look at Osime again, so many quality, but again the coach failed them. I feel it's a right decision to qualify for the World Cup because you need a coach that you can trust that the country will be behind him. But I don't think it's experienced enough to lead a, Niger- a country like Nigeria because if you look at the kind of coaches that usually coach in a national team. We remember Pizzo was a coach uh, the, Bafana. The, the Bafana Bafana. He didn't do well to a point where he couldn't even qualify for Brazil even though he said he came with vision 2014 that he's going to qualify Bafana, Bafana Bafana to Brazil. He threw with Ethiopia. The team was struggling. Steve Combella, his friend, we brought him in. Steve Combella ended up taking over. Also, Steve Combella that was a the, different pizza man it, uh, exactly but he did he, that is the record that is we're talking about his record in the national okay. team he's not that good even in club football the, the only high profile job he had it was at al-ali in his last year at Hale ali there were so many most of the legends of al-ali they were not happy with the way he was playing they were not convinced that al-ali should be playing the way pizza was playing though yes he was winning he won two champions league there but there were always complaints that this is not the Ali Ali want. I don't. Uh, Nigerians like complaining too much it, it, with their national team. They are so proud of their football. I'm not sure if they can be patient enough with Pizom Semane to build it, yeah, for the from double team. Mahuta? Yeah, I, I, it, 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 uh, it's, a, it's a bit of a, a, a sweet kind of story because, I mean, the coach took them to the final and then now he's fired, but when you, you, you look at it in a football way, what, what more would you want other than to, to get to the final? I mean, in the final, you, it, 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 it's a lottery. It's either you win it or you don't. But Ivory Coast came from nowhere to win the cup. But uh, I, I think it, 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 it's talk that has been there that uh, the Nigerians were not happy with the coach. So it's not a surprise that he's gone. And I would think they would want a, a coach who can get the best out of the talent they have because they have massive talent in, in Nigeria. And I, 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 I don't know if Coach Pito is, is ready for, 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 for national teams, you know, because uh, Coach Pito likes football and he's a guy who wants to be involved all the time in football. Mm. But with national teams, you're going to be in camp for about seven days and after that you're off for two months. I don't know if he's ready for that. But I would think the experience of coaching in in the Champions League and coaching a team like Al Ahly and also going to uh, 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 the, the Middle club East, World Cup, which, Middle East, yeah, yeah, the club up and all that. That puts him in good standing to to coach a team like Nigeria. But 
is he ready for for for, for the break from football? Because I know Coach Kito, he likes football and he, he he's always talking about football wherever he is. Whether he's ready for that, I wouldn't know. But for me, he's a great coach, and I think he can do something with Nigeria if given a fair chance. But we know how Nigerians are and the relationship they have with South Africa. I don't think they'll accept the South African coach. Oh. You know? Well, there you go. We sent it out there and we said, uh, hashtag Ask Podcast Friday. Mpomukwena says, hey bro, uh, please ask Nadim if he still feels the same about Bongani Zoom when the position is playing after his performances, especially on Tuesday. <laughs> Bongani Zoom playing that central defense position. You said, no, no. Uh, do you still feel the same after having seen Actually, him? Actually, I said... If you want to prolong his career, he can join that position. But I don't think it's a solution. I don't think it's gonna be the best defender. It's gonna be Lucas Hatte. He's not. He's not. He's, he's never played defense in his life. He's just being introduced. He's not. He's hardly played five games there. I think let's see him playing in the tough matches in the Champions League in that position. Then we'll say yes. Playing white hat in a semi final, then we, that does well. Then then you can feel like for me, I think it's too early to speak. Yes, he's done well in the few matches he's played, but it is what it is. All right, thanks so much, Nadim. There, uh, let me start with you, Biso. Your match of the weekend before we take the calls. Um, I think the match just playing tonight is very interesting. Uh, you've got a Stellenbosch team that has won four of their last five league games against the Chipa United team that's only won one of their last five games. So it's it's going to be interesting to see how it, how it plays out. But I, I'll definitely give it to a Stellenbosch at home. Hmm. Nadim, yours match of the weekend? Yeah, I would like to go to Poloko and Orlando Pirates and Poloko and City. The last game at Orlando Stadium, they drew one one. If you look at Pirates in the last few matches, they have not won in the last three league matches. Now they are playing away in Polokwane. It's one of those matches where you think the home team, they are not going to lose to Pirates. Maybe pa- Polokwane will draw. Hmm. Mahuta, is there a game you're looking forward to this weekend? Yeah, I always look forward to Stellenbosch and I'm, I'm preparing for them now. I like how they play. I like Coach Steve Baka. I like how he, he brings the best out of the players he has at his disposal. And I can't look forward to any other teams in the PSL because they, I mean, the only <laughs> game that I would probably look forward to is next week when TS Galaxy play uh, Mamelodi Sundown. But oh, we're all looking forward to that one. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Because of the talk between the two <laughs> yes, but yes. All the other teams, I mean, uh, and Amazulu just sat back like a, a lamp uh, waiting to be beaten. And I've never seen a. Uh, a goal in, 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 in my entire life where oh Mahuta you always say the great points just before I need to take a break alright here we go call Metro FM now on 0860 00 drop us a voice note on 060 552 7303 waking up I'm too turned up good evening Adile that's a feast here Lignora all the way from Pretoria Andile, a Gahana Mepra, Gahana Bona, Kirkahana, Esli Bagania, a Gahani, Locho or Tuheti, I get to sit telling in Maragas Vimishimu Bank, Mara Mitimushi, the general. A meeting Maram Shishima, a Lochagas Vimishimu Bank. A bona, never, 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 never. Yeah, but Mishishi won't play forever. It's like 30, 34, 35. And there's a three year gap between the two of them. Yeah. Lots is 30. Yeah, but Ron is, is a plan. That's why he brought him. Okay, well, let's wait and see. Because, I mean, Lodge is, uh, is uh, 30 this year. Uh, 30 years, I'm sure she's 34. He turns 31, Lodge, in July, I think it is. But no, no, let's go to the next one. Good evening, Podcast Friday. Guys. Hey. Yeah, I agree with Nadim Ma'an. Hey, bro. Look at me, talks too much. <laughs> <laughs> so, you always blame people. This and that you didn't get me the job because of what what I uh, know. This guy talks too much. Ma. Ah, thank you. This is Mr. Explorer. All right. Uh, let's uh, take one more before we go to the calls. Evening, evening, Andile. Dr. and Mahuta there. Yeah, you know, you are talking about a special player. Uh, Tembi Gozilog is a special player. That guy is a God-given talent. No one is gonna take it away from him. He, he can he can play. He can play at Bafana Bafana level and and produce good result for us. There, he's a quality player. Even if he was still at Pirates, when he was going to face the Chiefs, I know that if he's on the line, mm. on the lineup, then Chiefs is gonna have a problem. Yeah, all the best. He can do better. 
It's April in Carazo Cruz. Appreciate it. Thank you so much, sir. Let's take the calls. Let's start uh, with Sponelo. Sponelo is out in the KZN, wants to speak about Kaiser Chiefs. The guys are here. Sponelo, talk to me. Hey, Mr. Nuba. Hey. I heard you when you called me, Mr. Nuba, my brother. Mm. Yes, Sponelo. I'm yeah. very sad about Kaiser Chiefs. I think the players of Kaiser Chiefs are not respecting us. They are not, they, they, they are not respecting the case of Kaiser Chiefs. They are, they, are, they are not respecting the, the log of the team. No, my brother. I, I'm very disappointed that we were beaten by a, a mix for team who came from, from nowhere to pick us in Medbed, my brother. I'm a disappointed support of Kazakhstan, including my friends, my brother. Hmm. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not here at all. Tomorrow, they are playing followers. I don't believe in them. I think they are going to lose the tournament against followers tomorrow, my brother. Yes, Monel, I appreciate it. I, Thank you so much for talking to us. Let's go to Jerry. Jerry's out in Bumalanga. Also wants to speak about Chiefs. Jerry. Hey, ma. Unjan. No, no, no. I'm strong, Chief. Wena. Yeah, I'm strong, too. Mm. Um, ma, I want to say something about what you, you have said there with the guys. Uh, about the coaches, the poor players, the... I think Ma ah, you mentioned Manyama, Kama Piriati, C B D, Kikendoli, I can add Castillo when he arrived there. He was hot. Now he is he's no more hot like Yeah, before. so it's beyond football, right? What I'm looking what I'm when I'm looking the problem Ma ah, mm. is the coaches that we are having. Kedash is never coach, coached by a local coach and become successful. Stuart Baxter uh, is not local. Ernst Middendorp is not local. They were all there. Ernst Middendorp from the yeah, season, true. he came here. He never done well at Kedash. He did. First season, he, he won, won two trophies with Chiefs. He won two league yeah. Yes, yes, but... The, his game was not a Kedachi style of play. So you want a like, game or you want to win? <laughs> no, Kedachi are, are not winning just for the... when we are kicking the ball just for winning. We win with style. All and right. The no, I hear you. Style of Kedachi. When last did Thank you win you so with much, style? Jerry. Let's go to Jimmy. Leave Nadim alone in his style. <laughs> Jimmy, you're the last one. You're the last one, <laughs> my brother. <laughs> Hey, Jimmy, do they still need a holding strike? Ah, my brother, who is the one good well? Sorry, Jimmy. Nadini, a couple of good questions. Do you think uh, Yusuf uh, Mark is a material of Kaiser Chiefs? No, I don't think so. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Jimmy. Come <laughs> That's it, Mahuta. We always love having you, man. Uh, uh, we watch you on the podcast there by Mamlori Sandal. Yeah. We support everything you do. Thank you so much for always gracing us with uh, uh, superior knowledge as somebody who not only played the game, but mastered it. Thank you so much. Mesh 21. Awe. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's out of here. Mesh 21, Mahuta. He's gone. Guys, thank you so much for popping in, yeah? Thank you, Andile. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.